Uh, Tim Donnelly is on my left, your right, your right. Tim has been an assemblyman from uh, the Lake Arrowhead area for the last few years, and Neil Cash Carey was a great and explain their main points, and then after that it's really simple. I'll ask a question of one, then the other guy gets to respond again, then Ken will ask a question of one of them, and then the other guy will get to respond. And after six o'clock, we'll, uh, we'll work in you here in the audience, okay? But in between, so, they will question each other. Yes. And uh, doing that, I told Tim off the air, get ready, because you're going to ask Neil a direct question. So come from John and Ken or the audience, we want to know what you want to ask Neil and vice versa. Uh, we want clear, direct answers. If there aren't clear and direct, we're going to call you on it. Uh, statement or opinion or answer, okay? And then let, let them speak clearly. Otherwise, we'll just drag you out, okay? And it's really hot out there in the parking lot, so you don't want to do that. And if our stand-in Jerry Brown has anything to say, he uh, may right. <laughs> Jerry Brown would not come to the debate, but uh, we have what's left of him over there in the corner there. He's, he's, all, trail these days. he's already been lubricated twice over. Um, <laughs> So, uh, welcome everyone, uh, including the media weasels. And let's start off with, uh, how about Tim, you go first, uh, we'll give you about a minute. Great, well thanks to everyone for coming here today. Yeah. I'd like to take a moment to say to everyone who's been affected by this fire that our thoughts and prayers are with you all. And let's keep our firefighters and everyone on the front lines in prayer. You know, I came to California when I was 19 years old. I was third oldest of 14 kids. Let me tell you, we lived in a four bedroom, 1.5 bathroom home. And yeah, that 0.5 was real important in the morning. About half my family saw me off and I turned to wave goodbye to them and they were inside fighting over my room. My dad chased me halfway down the street and gave me two dollars and quarters and he said, son, whatever you do, don't call home. But you know what, I should have been nervous. I should have been worried, but I knew where I was going. I was going to California, to a land of opportunity, to a place where the only limitation on your dreams is what you can imagine and how hard you're willing to work. You know, within a decade, I had met and married the most amazing woman, my wife, Rowena. We had five sons and a grandson, and I was living the California dream with my own business and manufacturing until along came the government. I want my state back. I want my freedom back. I want my sons to have the same opportunity that I had to live the California dream without having to leave the state of California to do it. All right, Jim. Thank you very much. Thank you, John and Ken and Tim. Thank you for being here. And thank you, all of the audience and all of the listeners at home. It's a great opportunity for me. I'm running for governor because I want to defeat Jerry Brown, period. There's a model for doing it, folks. As Republicans, we're down to 28% in our state, registered Republicans. Every year we decline, we shrink. If we don't grow our party, we're not going to win another election, period. So my vision for California and for the state and for our party is to bring everyone together, to unite us on the principles of hard work, fiscal responsibility, the rule of law. Now, folks, there's a model that this works. We just won a great, resounding victory in San Diego with Kevin Faulkner as a great new mayor. Now, how did he do it? He did it by reaching out to every group, Latinos, African Americans, Asians. He said, I want you with me. If you're committed to working hard, I want you with me. Let's go defeat the Democrats. And he crushed his labor-funded Democratic opponent. If Kevin, Faulkner, if Kevin Faulkner can do that in San Diego, we can do that in California. That's my vision. Thank you very much. Tim will ask Tim a question, Neil will answer it. First question I want to ask, uh, no surprise to the audience, is about the tax situation in California. We are uh, at or near the top in all the major taxes and have been for a long time, and all the high tax states in the country have uh, suffering economies. There's clearly a connection. But now we're at the point where the top 1% of Californians 
are paying 51% of state income tax. And a lot of that is because of a great stock market and capital gains taxes. And you know what happens. Next time we've got a stock market crash, all that money's going to dry up. We'll have a $20 billion deficit. Is it fair to have the top 1% pay over 50% of the income tax? And is it a smart policy? And how would you specifically change the tax structure? Well, you're exactly right for raising that point. It's a huge problem. Our taxes are too high and we're not getting our money's worth for the taxes that we're collecting. But here's, the, here's what the Democrats have done. They've made the tax code so progressive that almost any tax cut by definition is a tax cut for the rich. So they paint us into a corner. So it's very hard to change that. So my plan is step one, to put people back to work. If we lower our unemployment rate, we have more people paying taxes, then it's gonna be easier for us to lower that overall tax rate, and then that makes the economy grow even faster. So you're exactly right. We have to address it, but I think the step one is putting California families back to work. Step two is then lowering that tax rate so we all are better off. You know, we had an employer in the city of San Bernardino that sells gun safes. Gun safes are a big, bulky product, and we passed all kinds of laws to require that you buy a gun safe. You'd think that a gun safe maker, knowing he's going to have a banner year, would stay in the state of California. But he moved. And he took hundreds of jobs with him in a place where we didn't have hardly any jobs at all. And I asked him why he was moving. And he said, when the government can put a gun to my head and steal from me, and Prop 30 was retroactive, and I've got no ability to change my behavior. And he said, when they take the money and instead of giving it to the kids in the classroom, it's hijacked by the teachers union, he said California has lost its moral and ethical basis for its government. We need to lower tax rates and grow the base, and we need to get this economy moving. And you know what? The best way to do that is get the government out of the way. Hotel in Anaheim, 2550 East Cadella. We've got this big governor's debate going on here. Tim Donnelly and Neil Kashkar. Johnny Kent Show. Shannon has the news. Nearly 13.